Bobby, how do you feel social media affects politics? Hello YouTube and welcome to Monet's Madness, the show where my goal is always to inform, not to offend. But if I have to offend in order to inform, so be it. In today's episode, we'll be covering respectability politics. It's a very misunderstood topic, so hopefully I can shed some light. And first, I want to say happy Labor Day and everyone enjoy this fabulous Monday off from school and work. Now, let's dive right into Ask Monet. My first question is, what is my family like? So I'm only gonna talk about my immediate family because my extended family is very large, but I have a mom, a dad, and one older brother who is 21 and goes to a and We are best friends, I love him to death, very close, and we're kind of opposite in some regards and then very, very similar in others, so you would just have to see us together. But he's wonderful and we look exactly alike. And second is my parents, who are the epitome of black love, and they've been married for, I want to say 22, 23 years, and they just love each other so much. I want to have a marriage just like theirs, and they give me advice on everything, so I love my parents to death. My second question is, why did I want a talk show? So I still want a talk show on television, but at first that was my only goal until I went to one of my professor's office hours, shout out to Dr. Kendrick, and he told me, you know, you can have a talk show now on YouTube, film with your iPhone 6, upload it, and that is how things are being done nowadays. So I listened to him and here we are. So shout out Dr. Kendrick, thank you for inspiring me to live out my dreams right now. But let's go ahead and start talking about respectability politics. So, in a nutshell, it's basically the idea that if black people respect themselves, then white people will respect us. In a nutshell, there are other caveats to it. And there are many respectability politics advocates that are not necessarily the sellout stereotype that is portrayed in society. They make a lot of sense. Now, I have issues with respectability politics, and I also see where they are coming from. So my main issue with it is that it takes the accountability away from white people. The idea is that if black people respect themselves, then white people will respect us. Therefore, what is that saying? It's saying that the problem is not that white people are racist. The problem is not that we are being targeted. The problem is that we don't respect ourselves. So if we were to fix that problem, then white people would no longer target us. And that takes away their accountability for their actions. Shout out to Dr. Woods for discussing this in Afro-American Studies. And the problem is not that we don't respect ourselves. The problem is not that we're black. The problem is that white people are racist and carry out these ideas through violence, through crimes, and through systemic acts that oppress us along with other minorities. Now granted, I am generalizing by saying black people this and white people that, knowing that all black people do not fall under the category of not respecting themselves and that not all white people fall under the category of racist. But for terms of simplicity, I'm just going to say black and white people. The issue is not that black men sag their pants and wear large t-shirts. The issue is not that black women smack their gums or bamboo hoop earrings and have clothes that are um, revealing. The issue is that we have melanin in our skin and we will continue to be targeted because of that fact. And doing anything to suggest that the issue is anything but racism is disrespectful and inaccurate. So that is my number one issue with it, is that white people should be held accountable for their actions, for their crimes, for their violence, that is based on skin color and nothing else. But, on the flip side, here is where I don't necessarily agree, but here is where I see the rationale in respectability politics. As a black person who knows that you'll be targeted whether you are smacking your gums, being a loud, angry black woman, or having curled hair and a nice dress and glasses. I choose to have curled hair, wear nice dresses and glasses because one, it's just my style. And two, I do not want to enhance my danger factor. I do not want to enhance the idea of being targeted by playing into the stereotype. Let's look at having a car accident, for example. 
I'm a very safe driver. I do not pick up my phone while I am driving. I always wear my seatbelt, both hands on the wheel. And yeah, I just am very paranoid about stuff like that. I still had a car accident this summer and I did nothing wrong. It was the other person's fault and I was still injured. However, some people say, you know, you can have a car accident no matter what, so I'm gonna text and drive. I'm not gonna wear my seatbelt. And you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and drink too. Those are doing nothing but enhancing your risk of getting into a car accident. Why would you knowingly drink and drive, text and drive, not wear a seatbelt, and you already know that without those three things, you already have a good chance of getting into a car accident. You're doing nothing but putting yourself in more danger. If you parallel that with respectability politics, as a black person who knows that the melanin in my skin is already a death sentence in the society, I'm not going to enhance the idea by playing into stereotypes, by dressing certain types of ways, and by doing things that I know will enhance the chance of me getting killed or mugged or hurt by someone who doesn't like the, my skin color, you know? So while I understand that some people are like, you know, it's my style, I wanna wear sagging pants and baggy t-shirts and stuff like that, you know, by all means, do you, but just know that you're doing nothing but giving them invalid justification. There is no justification for taking life. There is no justification for racially motivated crimes. But we know that news networks take those things and they run with it until the cows come home to try and criminalize and demonize our people for the simple fact of he was wearing a hoodie in a white neighborhood. He had a criminal record. He this, he that, she this, she that. She was loud and angry. She was not complying. All these things to make it seem like white people or police officers in general are justified in our killings and we do not need any of that. So no, your suit and tie will not save you. My dress will not save me, but neither will sagging pants and baggy t-shirts. So. It is a double-edged sword. I'll let you arrive at your own conclusion about how you feel about respectability politics, but my job is simply to inform. In terms of my Monday's madness, this week I am obsessed with Apple Music. It, I have the uh, free trial and I love the curated playlist. They definitely speak to my musical taste and they have a lot of music where I can create my own playlist anyway and I just really like it. I listen to music all the time so it is needed. And my second is Starbucks. So anyone who knows me knows that I'm a junkie. I'm an addict. I go probably about once a week, sometimes a little more. And it's just, I just need my coffee fix sometimes. So that has, is what I've been obsessed with this week. This is Monet signing off. Peace and love.